Grace and peace to welcome to worship that you are here up and down California and the West Coast and across the country, gathered together in this space and in many spaces. We are a community of diverse spiritualities and we hope that you know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, there is a place for you here. Um, as we continue in worship, we're continuing in our worship series, Ways of Wisdom. And you might be ask, asking yourself at this point, why are we still talking about wisdom? It has been about five weeks, so I just want to zoom out for a moment um, and think about the whole of Scripture. In Scripture, we find the story of God and us and all creation at the heart are the gospel stories, the stories of God's love for us in Jesus Christ, but we get the expanse of God's liberating love from the very beginning, the family stories, the liberation story of the Exodus. We have the words of the prophets who talk about the things in this world that need to come to an end so that God's new thing may rise up. We have the poetry of the Bible and the Psalms. We have the epistles where communities are trying to figure out what it means to live the life of Christ. And throughout scripture, we also have wisdom. We have people seeking for ways of living that lead to more life. Friends, we hope that in your experience here, we will discover a spiritual use in life. Our hope when we gather in worship is that worship changes us so that we can go out and in the name of Jesus change the world. Friends, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God. And I'm going to invite Joan to come and lead us in our call to worship. To worship. The heavens are telling the glory of God. proclaiming God. They have no speech. They use no words. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth. Let us join the chorus of creation. Let us raise our voices in resounding praise. May the words of our mouths and the songs of our hearts be pleasing to our God. Come, let's worship God. Let's worship God and let's join together. Uh, you can rise in body or in spirit as we sing together, great God of every blessing. Please join me in prayer as we confess our need for God. Holy wisdom, holy word, 
as we seek to embody your word of life in the world. Help us discern between words that harm and words that heal. Forgive our words that cause harm to others, ourselves, and the world. Thoughtless words, hurtful words, untrue words, words that go unsaid when they need to be voiced. Help us find and speak words that heal and build up, encouraging words, honest words, wise words, and a pause from speaking when silence offers more than words can say. Trusting in your grace, we pause in our speaking and listen for you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me as we affirm and give thanks for God's abounding grace. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, every day is a brand new day. The past no longer determines who we are. In Christ, we are a new creation, a fresh new word for this day and the next. All of us in Jesus, forgiven, loved, and free. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. amen. Alleluia. Amen. And assured of that grace, we exchange Christ's peace with each other, a peace that transcends everything that separates us, including distance and space. And so we offer peace across our congregation online and in person. I'm going to invite our tech team to put the camera on our in-person uh, congregation so that we can wave peace to our online, our online friends. And I'm gonna, in, we're now going to unmute the microphones and ask um, folks online to unmute the mics. And within the congregation, we'll share words of peace with each other. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Hi, Joni. How are you? Hi, Brian. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm with you. Good. good to see you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jim. How are you? Hi, Mayland. How are you? Hi, with you. Hi, Bill. Hi, Mayland. How are you? Hi. I am fine. Is that and Barbara? Hi, Hi, Ann. Hi. Peace, Maylin. Hi, Bonnie. Peace. Hi, Sounds like everybody's in a tunnel. Hi, Hi Peace, Hi, Peace. Hi, 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 Beth. Hey, Hi. 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 how's your arm doing? Hi, Raquel. It's okay. Yeah. Nice and pink. Pam's on nice here. Nice and pink. Yeah. Peace, Pam. Yeah. Peace. Plenty of pink. You, Bill. Uh, Peace. Peace. Lorna, are you on the mend now? Yes. Mm. Getting better. Peace, Good. Susie. Yeah. Hi, Joan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Peace Bill. be with you all. Hello. Mm. Peace be with you. Yeah. Peace be with you, Anne. Yeah. Ron Vestal. Hey, Lynn. Carol Clark. How are you? Peace on you. Mm. We're so Hello. good to see everybody. Hi, Mary Lee. Yeah. Good morning. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> Oh, peace, Mary Lee. Good morning. morning. Good to see you. As we share peace with I each other, they're not. already ready here. Peace. Peace. Um, oh, and here comes June. Uh, all ready to lead us with our Director of Family Ministries, Patrick. So this time is for you, June, Everett, Ander, Cece, Paula, Cecilia, Isaac, Frank, Gwen, Olivia, Charlotte, Elle, Ashley, Nate, Theo, Claire and Gavin, whether you are here in person with Mr. Patrick and me, or whether you are online, this time is for you and for everyone who is a child and for everyone who is a child at heart. So we're gonna welcome Patrick and the kids to lead us in worship. Okay, 
Everybody wave. This is going to be real fun. Everybody wave to ourselves. Say hey. Oh, cool. I think I'm going to have you for about 20 seconds, and then the rest of our time is going to be looking right up here. But my friends, we have had such a great week. We've done so many things. We started Compassion Camp last week. And friends, we did miss you, but we know we're so glad that you're feeling better and that you're here. Friends, at Compassion Camp, we've been talking about loving kindness, and I need us to practice saying loving kindness, but we can't say it just normal. We can't just say, hmm, loving kindness. That doesn't work. We have to say it kind of like a superhero. So can I have my four friends here? Can I have you stand up? Perfect. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put one fist on our hip like this and say loving. And the other fist say kindness. Say loving kindness. Yeah. All right. Ready? We'll say it as a superhero. Are you ready? Loving kindness. Woo! Yeah. Oh, friends, can I tell you something? Mr. Patrick has to be really honest. Sometimes loving kindness and practicing loving kindness is really hard. And um, you can have a seat. You can have a seat. Thank you. Thank you, CC and Anders and Evs and June. Great loving kindness. Friends, sometimes practicing loving kindness can be really, really hard. Sometimes we don't get it right. Sometimes we don't get it right. Sometimes when we try to practice loving kindness, Sometimes it doesn't quite translate, or we don't quite say it. So, one of the things that I want us to practice, and we're going to practice together, everyone, both in person and on Zoom, we're going to practice a thing called the loving kindness practice. And this is how we do this. So, loving kindness helps us remember the compassion that God has for each of us as we practice loving kindness with ourselves and others we develop the skills and mindset necessary to practice compassion so first what we're going to do is we are going to focus on what we hope for ourselves so take a second close your eyes and focus on what we hope for ourselves then I want us to say these phrases and feel these powerful feelings of loving kindness for ourselves without any judgment, okay? So I want you to repeat after me, okay? Say this. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. May I be at peace. Oh, yes. Oh, sweet June. That was so good. I like the hand, too. Awesome. Okay, now, next, I want you to think about someone who you spent some time with this week. So think about it for a second. It could be a sibling who we're currently playing with right now. It could be a friend from school. It could be uh, someone that we work with. I want us to think about that person and imagine this person in your mind. So think about them in your mind. And I want you to say these phrases. We're going to change our phrase just for a little bit. Uh, and I want, you to, I want you to say these phrases to them. So repeat after me again, okay? With our person in our mind, I want us to say, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. And may you be at peace. Great job, June. Okay, now, we're going to say it one more time, but we're going to say it thinking about ourselves and the ways that we hope to be happy, to be safe, to be healthy, to be at peace, and also our friend or maybe our friends and our family and all those around us. So last time, repeat after me, here we go. May you and I be happy. 
May you and I be healthy. May you and I be safe. May you and I be at peace. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So as you go from this place, if you're going from the sanctuary or if you're going from your home via Zoom, may you remember that may we be, may we ask God for help, may we ask others for help. May we and others be happy, be healthy, be safe, and at peace. Cool? Can I get a thumbs up? Oh yeah, this is, this is so cool and also so bizarre, because I know you're looking at me up there, but I'm right here and there's just a lot of weird things going on. Okay, let's finish with our pretzel prayer, okay? My friends, can you stand up and can you help us lead? Can you help us lead? Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, here we go. Can you face that way? Show our friends. Perfect. God, I love you. Help me to love others as you love me. Amen. All right, my friends, may you continue to practice loving kindness. Can I, can we say it superhero, superhero way one more time? Loving kindness. Yeah. May we practice loving kindness throughout the week. And I hope that with that week, you have a great one. You can go back to your seat, friends. So great to see you. To all my friends on Zoom, it's great to see you as well. Peace be with you. That was great. And we did a loving kindness meditation. So I'm going to invite the choir to come on up. Um, I, I told them before worship how exciting it was last Sunday just to have the choir back in worship, um, singing live. Such such a blessing to, to be together. And um, we also had the blessing of coffee hour last week. And that was, um, you know, just a great, great ways to be not only we've had coffee hour for a, a while now online but also to be in person. So we think that we're gonna do coffee hour. Um, from now on, we're gonna try it uh, in both spaces. So on the second and fourth uh, Sundays of each month, we'll have coffee hour both online and in person. And so as we um, move towards our experience of the word, we're gonna begin that experience today with a psalm, um, a wisdom psalm. So here are these words of Psalm 1. Blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of God and on that law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the way of the wicked will perish. But God watches over the way of the righteous.
This morning's scripture is from James chapter 1, verse 19, and chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen and slow to speak. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, my siblings, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. We or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes a strong wind to drive them, they are guided by a very small rudder whenever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great the forest is set ablaze by a small fire and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a whole of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless God our Creator, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My sibling, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my siblings, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Holy wisdom, holy word, be thou our vision, be thou our true word, your true wisdom from above that with you and in you we might find our way to life. Amen. This morning, I'm going to start with the bad news. Our words, the words we say every day, day in and day out, our words can and do crush deceive, distort, demean, and destroy. On the regular, our words hurt, harm, and wound folks, sometimes even those we love deeply. I start with the bad news this morning because the writer of James fairly clobbers us in the head with it. They don't mince words. The tongue, the writer says, the source of all our speaking, the tongue is a world of evil. It corrupts our whole body and is itself set on fire by hell. And then two verses later, the writer says the tongue is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And in case we don't get the point, the writer of James offers up some vivid imagery. The tongue is like a bridle on a wild horse in need of taming. If we don't rein it in, well, watch out for the horse's kick. The tongue is like the tiny rudder on a big ship with the power to run the whole ship onto rocky shoals in the midst of a storm. Think Titanic, only bigger. The tongue is like a spark. 
that can set on fire the entire cycle of nature. In our brittle and drought-ridden world, we don't need to say anything more to understand the enormity of that image. We could say that all this is hyperbole, and technically it is, rhetorically it is, but I think we get it. I think we get what the writer of James is saying. If you aren't already thinking of this, take a moment right now and think of something, sometime, something you've said that you now regret. A careless word, a word that, well, glossed the truth, a word that hurt someone. For me, I can almost see it in slow motion. That word that goes out of my mouth and almost immediately I know, I know what I've said and as the word is passing across my lips on the way out, I desperately want to just reach out and grab it and pull it back in, but then I see how it lands on the person to whom I have spoken it. I can see it in their face. The impact I should have known, should have considered before I spoke. Wisdom takes the words we say very seriously. Wisdom is finding ways of life that lead to more life. Wisdom knows that in our words lie the potential for great harm. Life-giving words or death-dealing words. Wisdom thinks about our words all the time, whether we look to the wisdom in Proverbs and the Hebrew Scriptures or the wisdom in James and the New Testament or the wisdom in almost any other tradition. We can't. We can't find ways of living that lead to more life if we don't consider the power of the words we say and the impact of our speech on those around us, on ourselves, and on the whole world. James picks up on that and warns us of what we already know. There are words that hurt. When the worship team talked about the scripture this week, Martha Spears, I'm gonna quote you, Martha Spears said, you know that saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me? She said, well, that's just a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> we all know Words can hurt. There are words that are not true that cause great harm. Think about the vaccine. Countless numbers of people have died because they believed false words, untruths. The lie about the vaccine believed that lie until it was too late. There are words that don't match up with the lives we live, hypocrisy. We touched on that last week. Don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers. In another part of James, the writer says it this way. If you come along someone who is sitting there without um, enough clothes and without enough food, and you say, go in peace, keep warm and stay fed, but don't do anything that matches your words, what good is that? What harm is that? There are words that discriminate and oppress. The writer of James focuses on the poor, the poor who are spoken out to the margins of their community, words that support systems of poverty and racism and xenophobia, all manner of injustice. And the writer of James also talks about empty bo boasting, something we might not think about at first, what I might call big talking. Oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that when we really don't know. We don't know what the future holds. Know that you don't know and say, God willing, I hope to do this. Stick to what you know, name what you don't, speak plainly, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Our words can and do crush, deceive, distort, demean, and destroy. That is the bad news. 
So what's the good news? Well, oddly enough, the good news starts in the same place the bad news does. We are created this way. We are created with the power of words. We are created ourselves to create new realities with the words we say. It's been that way from the very beginning. When Proverbs speaks of creation, it places wisdom there from the very beginning, woman wisdom, the first of God's works from, the very, from before the world began. Wisdom present with God before the mountains, before the sea. She is there with God as God sets the heavens in place, sets the boundaries of the earth and the sea. Wisdom in pre present in creation, Proverbs says, filled with delight day by day, rejoicing in the whole world and delighting in humankind. She's there with us, wisdom. The creation stories in Genesis tell us that God speaks and a world comes into being. Let there be light, dark, the stars, the sun, the moon, the earth and every living thing, the seas, the land, plants, birds, fish, the animals that crawl on the earth, and us, God creates us in the image of God. And then, as God walks with humanity in creation, gives us the power to name what God has created, the gift of continuing God's creative work in the words we say. And there's the creation story at the beginning of the gospel. The Gospel of John in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God in Christ. The Word became flesh and dwelt in us, full of grace and truth. God's Word pulsing in the fullness of humanity, or as James says, God's Word planted in us. Remember last week when we look in that mirror, what we see is Christ the life of Christ, the word of Christ, alive in us. We are created in the image of a God who speaks worlds into being. Our words have the power to speak realities into being. That sounds like a bold claim, maybe even a boast, but think back to the beginning of this year. As I was working on the sermon, I remembered that we spent all January talking about the words we say. That was our worship theme. We talked about together we serve. Those are words that this community spoke together years ago to describe your experience of your life in Christ, words that continue to create reality as we say them again and again to ourselves. Together, we serve and as congregations sing the hymn of the same name that has come to be in our hymnal. Those words have informed the words that we've claimed for this season of pandemic. Together we serve, moving forward, together we know the reality that has flowed from those words. We've taken to saying, this is the day that God has made, let us rejoice and be glad in an ancient words of scripture made new each morning in our speaking, speaking into the day the hope that we might notice God's presence in the whole of life and be a part of what God is doing. Grace abounds. Over the past 18 months, how have those words shaped reality for you? Grace abounds. When have you spoken them? How has your world changed? So here are some true things. Our words can and do crush, deceive, distort, demean, and destroy. And 
We are created in the image of a God who speaks worlds into being, and we are given possibility and power to speak realities into being. This morning's scripture says it like this, out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing. Blessings, words that create good in the world, and cursing, words that harm and destroy. That describes our reality, and it's problematic, as James would say, That should not be so. As the writer explains, we are created in the image of the God who speaks world into being, and far too often we curse, we speak harm towards those others who are also created in the image of God. With this awesome power in our words to create and destroy, to build up and tear down, How do we navigate between the two? How do we navigate the shoals, control the wildfire, bridle that wild horse? How do we find our way to wiser words? How do we find words of life that bring more life? We may want to start at the beginning of wisdom and just say at first, we know not. The writer of James suggests something similar, but maybe even a bit more practical. It's a bit of last Sunday's scripture that we read again today. Beloved, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Or as the refrain from Hamilton goes, talk less, smile more. Aaron Burr says that to Hamilton again and again with some irony. You see, Aaron Burr's problem is that he doesn't speak up in the world when he should. And Alexander Hamilton's problem is he never shuts up. And his words cause a world of hurt. Be quick to listen and slow to speech. The beginning of finding our way to speech may be Silence. The Quakers have put this at the center of their life, beginning in silence and waiting for speech. Quaker meetings, their parallel of our worship, are filled with silence. They gather in silence and wait together each person waiting, each person listening for the stirring of the Spirit, and then speaking, if at all, only when there is a sense that a word is ready and fitting to emerge from the silence. Robert Lawrence Smith says it like this, for Quakers, wisdom begins in silence. Only by listening in stillness for that still small voice of the Spirit and letting it guide our actions can we truly let our lives speak. I've experienced that in a Quaker discernment practice called Clearness Committee. Within the Quaker tradition, it's a way that a member of the community can call folks together and seek support in working through some tough problem. The person invites folks to become this clearness committee. They gather in a circle in silence. When the person is ready, they present the problem, what they're struggling with, and then they sit there together in silence. The members of the committee are invited to offer a question or an observation, but only only after they have sat with this question, is the word that is emerging in me apt and timely and needed? They sit with their question before asking it and consider, is my question apt? Is my question pertinent and relevant to the problem my friend is bringing, or is it like so many of our thoughts, beside the point. Is it timely? Is this the right time to speak these words? And perhaps most importantly, is what I am about to say needed? 
Does my friend need this question? Do they need this observation? Or is this about something else? Maybe is it about me and my needs and my baggage or my impulse in this moment? And they wait together, testing their words and speaking only after mulling their words in silence. Can you imagine how much more silence there would be in the world? How fewer careless words if for every word we listened with the spirit to see if our word was apt and timely and needed. If as those created in the image of God who speaks worlds into being, we considered in silence the impact of our words on those who also bear the image of God. Back a few weeks ago, we considered the wisdom of the generations, and I asked, what wisdom do you bring in, from your world, in, from your life? What's a word of life from your life? And I invited you to email me or talk to me or share, and some folks did. Someone said to me, you know, I think wisdom doesn't come to us only in words. Sometimes there is wisdom in silence with no words needed at all. Someone else said to me, you know, even when you have wisdom, I don't think you always need to share it. I'm not gonna tell you who that person was, but they're rather close to me. The, the wisdom is sometimes it's better to keep it to yourself. Sometimes it's not what someone needs to hear right then. Maybe they need some space to get to that wisdom on their own. That's some wisdom. This week, Jessica sent me this quote from Yeats. In our silence, in our silence, we can make our minds so like still water that beings gather around us to see their own images and so live for a moment with a clearer, perhaps even fiercer life because of our silence. So that's the invitation this week. Be aware of the power of words. Think some. Think some about the words that need to be said and the words that might not. Is the word apt and timely? and needed. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Talk less, smile more. Remember that mirror last week? When we look in that mirror, we see the life of Christ embodied in us. May we, in our reflection, create moments of stillness so that others might be able to gather around and see their own image, the image of Christ. And because of our silence, so live for a moment with a clearer, perhaps even fiercer life. Friends, and so as we move from that word, we move into a time of prayer, which includes a time of silence. So Devira is going to come and lead us in our prayer song, Ways of Wisdom. Following the Ways of Wisdom, we will share silence together and then pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Friends, I invite us to be in prayer.
Holy wisdom, holy word, in the beginning you created all creation, the stars, the moon, the earth, the land and sea, every living thing, including us. You created us in the image of you, and you delight in your creation. With all creation, we give you thanks and praise. Help us to live lives that love, honor, and nurture all creation, ways of living that lead to more life for every living thing. We pray for those who are hurting, for healing, for those who are hungry, food to thrive, for those who are unhoused, shelter, for those who mourn, comfort, for those who are lonely, companionship. Engage us in your work of justice, healing, and peace. We pray for discipline and sustainable ways of living to heal a world in climate emergency. We pray for humility and courage to dismantle systems of racism and all systems that oppress, to say true things about our complicity, to stop and to do better. We pray for truer, wiser words that bring healing and honesty and justice and peace. Give us the gift of thoughtful silence as we find our way to words full of wisdom and life. With grateful hearts, we join our voices with the voices of all who have ever called your name, praying the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, welcome to worship. It's so good to be with you here in, in this space and in our online space. If this is one of your first times visiting with us, we're so excited that you're here, and we hope that you'll feel the welcome of, of this community. I'd like to get to know you better, so feel free if you would like to email me at scottclark at togetherweserve.org, or you could put your email address in, if you're online, put it in the, um, in the chat, and I will be in touch with you, or we can speak together at the, at the door after, after worship. Um, we have uh, an opportunity immediately, well, not immediately after worship, but after worship to engage in our anti-racism group is going to lead us in a conversation about the book Cast. I have my copy here, and I can tell you the Marin County Libraries have bunches of copies. It's really easy to get a copy of this book, and it's an excellent read. But we're going to talk about how um, American racism it basically functioned as a caste system within the United States. It's, it's, um, it, it's a brilliant book. So what we're going to do is we're going to convene that on Zoom at 1130. So we're going to leave a little bit of space. So if you're in person and would like to join that, hopefully that gives you a little bit of time to get home by 1130 or close to that. Our hybrid experience that we're doing, we're really only able to do it. We only have the capacity to do it for worship. I know folks have asked about that, but what we do here, it's a lot of work, <laughs> and it involves a lot of folks and a lot of technology. So right now we're focused on doing the hybrid experience in worship, but to try and make this work in the online space, so we're going to do the, the book discussion online, but we'll give you to 1130. So if you're online, 
we'll leave this link open and we'll have it open. You can just, you know, turn your camera off and go and get a snack and come back at 1130, but we'll convene again for that important conversation. We have other opportunities throughout the week to be together. We have our regular prayer groups on, on Wednesday morning, the support group Thursday, uh, the prayer group, the centering prayer group that also meets in Thursday in the Memorial Garden. And every evening at 530, you can join with Mary Catherine and others um, to pray on Zoom. We have a number of opportunities to engage in our justice work. I've already mentioned one, the book discussion group after church. Um, we also have on, I need to know this because I'm moderating this event, on October 13th, we are co-sponsoring a panel, panel with um, the congregation Road of Shalom and Marin Interfaith that will support the, the Golden Gate Village Residence Council in getting their story out and talking about their concerns about plans for redevelopment, redeveloping their homes. It's an important conversation. So mark your calendars, October 13th. Um, we continue in our work in the, uh, with MIC, Marine Interfaith Council, Marine Organizing Committee. We have a couple of opportunities to donate to help, um, to help folks in need. We're partnering with Marine Canal Alliance. If you have diapers to help um, new mothers out, that would, that, the, that would be welcome. And, the, and Peter is the contact for that. If you would like to help um, donate some clothing to help Af displaced Afghan um, folks, Ozma is the contact for that. We also continue in our um, giving to the church, our offerings and our pledges. We're gonna take up a collection here in person. You can continue to give online or by mail. We have two offerings, the sensibility offering and the deacons offering that go to help people in need. And for the past, how long was the capital campaign? Five, five three years? For, for five years, this congregation has generously participated in a capital campaign that has resulted in um, some substantial improvements in the building that we're noticing now. And Dave Jones is gonna come and tell us a little bit about that. And Dave, if the wireless isn't working, I'd just suggest using the lectern. Okay, but give it a try. Hello, the last time I talked about the capital campaign was from the new Fireside Room Kitchen in March. So today I'm gonna to give you a quick update on things that have happened since then. Um, the first one is of, of the Fireside Room, which has entirely new floor. It was a uh, lot of skid marks from moving furniture over the last 30 years over that floor. So it was sanded down and it was refinished, as was, if you go to the narthex, the narthex. Uh, since that picture, the narthex has been painted. Uh, but the big thing was the new ADA bathroom, which is also um, for multigender you know, use. And people are probably familiar with the storage area by the women's room where we always had the chairs stored, tables stored, uh, and um, there were robes and all sorts of stuff in there. So we decided to make that into a bathroom because uh, you could walk into it with a straight shot, which is needed for an ADA bathroom. So if you go to the next slide, um, we were given a generous donation of $20,000 before the capital campaign, and they wanted us to do an ADA bathroom. And you, when you see what we've done, you can't do that for $20,000 unless you have a secret weapon. And that's Tom Leonard who did the construction at a rate much less than a contractor would have charged. So this is, Tom had to widen both doorways to 36 inches. Uh, he had to cut back a heating control panel that used to be in a metal um, box to the right. So you can go on, next slide. The heating goes across the ceiling for the Narthex heater, which is under the stairs. Um, next, there was no plumbing and there was no water. 
So we had to uh, cut the concrete, which we actually had a contractor do that one, and uh, then put in the new plumbing, which uh, Kevin Jones did. Uh, next slide. That is where the sink eventually went. There had never been hot water in the women's room. There had never been any water in that closet. So we had to bring in water and run the sewer line there. There had never been heat in the women's room or that area. So we put in heating uh, elements. And then Tom started to plasterboard all that up so you couldn't see it. So that's one slide and the next one also. And then that's what it looks like. If you're standing at the door, the next one shows what it looks like when you stand in there. There's a shelf for purses and cell phones and all sorts of things. If you turn to the right, that is what you see. So what else have we done? Um, the women's room looked like that. That hole in the wall was putting new hot water line in. And this is what it looks like now. Uh, what more? Well, there's what you're seeing right now. There were no cameras in the sanctuary. So if you're in Zoom space and we all of a sudden were doing hybrid and you were seeing us in here, in April there were no cameras in this space. There were no computers to operate the cameras in this space. If you're here now, you will. there are four cameras and three computers and a, um, a slide projector. So all that had to be done, and that was Carl Ralston and Patrick and a lot of people spending a lot of time to figure out how this sound system could integrate with a video system. And the last one is the library, which is now not a library. All the shelves are gone, the floors have been refinished, and it's going to become, we're gonna call it the patio room. Uh, and that is where we're not only gonna have uh, multiple purposes for that room, but the children and youth are gonna be able to use that on Sundays. So that is what we've done over the last six months. And your next report will be about water and heating, which we hope to have soon. <laughs> 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 okay, clock's ticking on that heating. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you so much to Dave for your leadership throughout all of this. Um, Dave also mentioned Tom Lannert. Thank you so much to him for everybody who's worked on this. Uh, when we saw the ADA bathroom, Maureen, thank you for the decorating touches in there. And the the really amazing things that this community and team has, has done to make this technology work and know that we're not done. So Al Nelson has helped us put together a plan where we're gonna upgrade these microphones now that we know how they work and where they do. So um, that work continues thanks to the capital campaign, the work of this community and the generosity of this community. So with that spirit, let's enter into a time where we pray our gratitude and express gratitude in the receiving of this morning's offering.
Please rise in body or spirit as we sing our closing song, God Speak to Me That I Might Speak. Friends, go now and let us bless the world with our words and our song and our silence. And as we go, know that we go Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ behind us, Christ before us, Christ beside and all around us, Christ within us, go in peace. Please be seated.